Cheerio and Bubbles playing. So that's kind of the biggest difference. If you're going to be doing some work in RF, I'd recommend picking up an old Apple. The reason, one of the reasons for that is when we're looking at an RF signal, oftentimes we might want to look at the modulated RF envelope on the station line. Slow the sweep speed way down to look at the envelope of the RF. So you might be looking at one or two milliseconds of division. At that speed, you can't see the RF carrier. This is like a big buzz ball. Okay? But you can see the modulated RF out. We're going to do that in a little bit. If you do that on a digital scope, what happens is the sample rate gets turned down to the point where you start aliasing the waveform. What I mean by that is, who likes old Western movies? You watch the old Western movies and you look at the, the wagon wheels, and sometimes they look like they're stopped or turning backwards. Right, that's because when the motion picture was effectively sampling the position of the, of the wheel, as the wheel was spinning around, sometimes it sampled and sampled and sampled and it looked like, the pictures made it look like the wheel was going backwards because it's not sampling. What you doing, Cheerio? Same thing huh? happens on a digital scope. If you don't sample the waveform fast enough, it can alias and look like something else. So a digital scope, you try to slow things down, look at an hour, wait for one second to see a sign <laughs> different frequencies of those that. Okay, and that'll scope around. So, some of the you know, comparisons that they have on the digital scope. So, regardless of what you're using, you're going to have to get the signals into the scope. Okay? Oftentimes, you're using proof. You know, like I've got one right here. That's kind of what they look like, right? Okay. Now, that's a way of basically connecting the signal, getting it into the scope. The goal is to get the signal into the scope. <laughs> Now you know you're going to have to post that Most tag roger. Most common probes are passive, what are called 1x and 10x probes. Okay. A 1x probe is literally basically like direct connection to the scope front end. A 10x probe does a 10x attenuation of the signal. And so why do I want to do that? I'll show you a couple of reasons why we want to do that, why 10x probes are really the most common thing. There are also a lot of other specialist probes, high voltage, curve, high voltage probes, differential probes, active probes. <laughs> really? Poor cat! I know, the bird just don't know when to quit. Let's talk a bit more about 1x and 10x probes and why there are 10x probes in the first place. Well, again, 1x probes is really a direct connection to the scope input. But the problem is that they can have excessive capacitive load. Remember, we looked at the scope. <laughs> Cat's like, okay, this is it. My ear hurts. <laughs> 